finally starting to feel like fall down here in the low country. So I decided I'd make this video outside instead of inside in my office. But that's not what this video is about. No, this video is about the Apexi PFC. Not unlike my previous Apexi PFC videos. But this video isn't necessarily about tuning. It's about an accessory to the Apexi PFC. See, other than the Apexi PFC, the next most important thing for it is a way to tune it. Now there's a few different ways you can go about doing that. Number one is obviously the commander handheld unit plugs in right there. But there's no way to pull logs, view the information, other than live views on the thing. So what's the next logical step is getting some sort of interface to connect to your computer. Now there's a bunch of different interfaces that you can connect to the computer. One of them being the data, data, data logic. That is what Apexi offers. The next option is what I went with, which is this guy right here. This is the FC HACO. Now like the data logic, it provides analog inputs. In this case, two analog inputs for whatever you want. In this case, I've been using the Wideband 02, and the second one I'm not currently using, but you can use it for anything from boost to oil temperature, oil pressure, anything, anything you want realistically. But that's kind of where this ends. This unit, while it does what it's supposed to do, it's very basic, very, very basic. So what's the next step up from this? That would be the obvious data logic. But a couple months ago, a company on Instagram, or more like an individual on Instagram, reached out to me and said he had a product that he developed that bridged the gap between this and something that is way more capable. That company is white and they started developing a product a couple years ago that looks like it could potentially provide you with what this does what the data logic does and so much more and let's go through and talk about this product a little bit because in my opinion it is a game changer for the apexi pfc so first off in the box itself it comes with a couple different things first and foremost is the device itself and that is housed in this little box. And if I want to talk about the quality real quick, well, first off, the box itself is actually nice. If I compare it to the FC Heiko, it's comparable in quality, if not better. Um, one thing I definitely like about it is the fact that it has ways that you can attach it to the side of the car, wherever you want it to be. The next thing I like is that it's more interchangeable or customizable than this. With this, you strictly have these two inputs and that's it. So this whole unit right here. This guy has a couple extra features to it. When you look at the Apexi PFC, you have this input right here is for the commander or for the interfaces to talk to the computer. This one is for either viewing and logging map vacuum data and controlling a boost solenoid and that's it when you look at the fc heiko when you attach it to it you get two analog inputs when you add the data logic to it you get four analog inputs so what this does is it gives you five analog inputs but split out in a way that makes it a whole lot easier to use so the first thing you notice is this bunch of cables right here this bunch of cables, number one, aside from being laid out in an incredibly efficient manner, it's long. And at the end of these, you have a bunch of sensor terminations that allow you to plug different sensors directly into this unit. Each one of these sensor plugs is nicely labeled for oil pressure, fuel pressure, oil temperature, and then this would be for a map sensor. And all of these plug in using this one connector right here that plugs in into the one and only spot it fits. Just like that. And this is where my thought of this being a game changer really comes into play. 
Unlike the FC HACO or the Data Logit, this is now fully connected. If I don't want to use these, I can go ahead and unplug it, and this is where the modularity also comes in. They provide this. So now I can self-wire whatever sensors I want into this unit. Along with that, they provide this cable, which plugs into this spot right here. And this is the dedicated spot for the Wideband O2. And then you might notice there's an extra port right here. And this is where things get special because we have two different options here. First off, we have this module. I plug that in. Once it's powered up, I now have Bluetooth. And then this one, again, I plug it in. Now I have USB. Without any of these plugged in, I already have Wi-Fi. To me, the addition of those features are amazing because the possibilities they open up are endless. Now that's not to say right off the bat by giving it wireless access, you can do anything with it because realistically you can't. But what they did was they wrote an API. They created an API that allows you to talk to another app on your smartphone or tablet called Real Dash. And with Real Dash, you're able to pull the information, parse the information that's being pulled from this, from your Apex PFC, and now display it on your smartphone or tablet. All right, so the first thing we gotta do is get the PFC installed. So I got it right here. Let's go ahead and unplug the stock ECU. All right, and for now, I'm just gonna sit here. I take this guy, and I'm gonna plug him into the side, put him right on top. Right there. All right, and the only one I'm going to plug in is gonna be the Wide Bando 2 that plugs in right here with Purple being positive, black being negative. All right, so I went ahead and downloaded the Real Dash app. So let's go ahead and download this and open it. So I now have it opened with the default app. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the car to accessory mode. So now we have power. And you can see down here, we have the Wideband O2 currently on heater. And I'm gonna go ahead and connect up to this, the Wi-Fi of it. You know what? I'm gonna connect up to the Bluetooth. And there it is. So it sees the Bluetooth, it sees the Wi-Fi. It's connected to the Wi-Fi. Let's see if it connects to the Bluetooth. Unsuccessful, not supported. Interesting. So that could just be because of the iPhone. I might have to try this one in Android later. All right, so we are now a couple months out from when I did the original recording of this video, where I did the unboxing of this device and did my initial, I guess, installation of it and getting it set up and everything. And I've got a couple of thoughts since then. First things first, I will address the good. The good is that compared to my FC HACO, one of the biggest problems people seem to be having when running Copilot specifically is, well, Windows 10 and now Windows 11 are the most up-to-date versions of Windows. Copilot does not like Windows 10, but it runs in Windows 10. But the bigger problem is the drivers required for the serial interface that the FC HACO talks over. It is extremely unstable on Windows 10. I've gotten it working, but it has almost continuous drops and makes the whole auto-tuning process almost unusable. FC Edit, I've noticed, does not have the same problem when logging and doing everything else, but Copilot does. So take that for what it is. What I found was the driver for the serial module found in this thing, in the white device, 
because it's newer, does not have those same problems. So I found it's more reliable overall. Not only that, but again, because this thing has six inputs, six analog inputs for various sensors, well, before you had no way of monitoring all those different sensors if you had no gauges. Well, now because this harness right here has oil pressure, oil temperature, fuel pressure, and the map sensor built in on it, you can now monitor those directly into this thing connecting to your phone, tablet, or a laptop in real dash. That's monitoring all of those real time and potentially logging them real time if you want it. So that was definitely a nice convenient feature. The Bluetooth is where we turned bad. And this is only kind of bad because the Bluetooth module that came with my device is not compatible with iOS. Now I already reached out to White and what they told me was they already have a new module that's being shipped with the devices now that is compatible with iOS. So that's already fixed. And the fact that they are doing active development on this thing still is awesome. It means that they're gonna have continuous updates in it. The next negative thing is not something I can fault White with because this is not their problem. During the setup of the Real Dash interface for this thing, there's two things I ran into. Number one, the configuration of it. Now, realistically, if you're using this device and you're tuning your car, you should have at least some sort of a technical knowledge and technical ability to set this stuff up. Real Dash is not difficult to set up, but when you're having to connect through Wi-Fi and then create, or this creates a wireless access point. So you have to connect to this and then you have to put in the actual network configuration settings into Real Dash. So we'll actually talk and connect to this at all. I'm very much the type of person that just kind of goes for it. I figure it out as I go along and this, I actually had to read the, the documentation of it to get Real Dash configured and set up for it. Not that much of a big deal, but it was just something to think about. Similar to the Bluetooth, I've already talked to White about this, and they are working with a company that is developing an app that will talk directly to this thing without that configuration or setup or whatever their, I guess, their expectations are. They should be taken care of, which is again, awesome. Active development is great. The last thing is again, not something I can fault White for, and this is in Real Dash. The interface that they created and the configuration files that they created require a premium theme in Real Dash to use, which is unfortunate, but understanding because again, this is a piece of software that is outside of this device that requires additional configuration. And that's kind of where the negatives of this thing end. The stability of it compared to my FC Haco has been night and day. The sensor, con sensor connections are night and day, considering they provided you with looking at this guy. I mean, this thing right here just plugs right into this. And then it gives you everything right there you need compared to on this guy. It's these screws, you have to unscrew put the wire in and then rescrew it in. It's just much more convenient. And then again, when you're looking at the interface of the FC Heiko, you got the serial portion of it right here, and the actual serial uh, driver is in this for the USB. I mean, that's additional items, additional things that can get messed up. Whereas again on this, I mean, you don't have to have the USB module plugged into it. You can have the Bluetooth module plugged into it, or you can just use the Wi-Fi altogether. It just, it, it has so many more options to it. And I like that and I appreciate that. And I guess my final thought is, would I recommend this over the Data Logic or the FC Heiko? At this point in time, yes. All of those other devices at this point are dated. The simple fact of this USB module that plugs into this thing is newer, uses a newer technology, has a newer driver associated with it that is compatible, fully compatible with Windows 10, is all I really needed to convince me that this device is, dare I say, superior than the others. The additions of 
these additional sensor inputs, the wideband O2 input, over the four of the Data Logit and the two of the FC Haco are honestly just cherry and icing on top. If I had two sensor inputs and it worked like it did, I would be dumping my FC Haco right off the bat. But everything else that this thing has really just adds to the features and functionality of it. But what would I like to see out of this device? What features would I like to see? Well, one of the largest problems with the PFC is the lack of safety measures. So this device already adds safety measures by giving you access to all of these sensors through the real dash. But what's to say if they were able to create some sort of, I guess, addition to the app or their own app that could handle dock control? I mean, I know on Copilot, it will automatically change your ignition timing if you have any sort of substantial knock. Well, if we could have something built into this or built into an app or on a computer or anything else that could, in real time, I mean, the polling rates on this are high enough to where if in real time it could monitor knock levels and retard timing, that's massive. That's people's number one complaint with this device. Or I should say that's everyone's number one complaint with the actual PFC is the lack of knock control. So if you could do something like that, that would make this device even better. Otherwise, I really don't have many complaints to it. Build quality could be better, but again, technically this is a product that I'd say is still in beta. It's actively developed. Um, the connectors, I mean, it's, it's a small operation. But for being a small operation, it is amazing and incredible feature set that it comes with and what it's actually capable of. So I can't even fault it for that. I really don't have much else to say about it. I mean, it's, it's a great device. It really is. And I would absolutely recommend this over an FC Edit, FC Edit, an FC Haco, or a Data Logit, or any of the other interfaces that have come out. If you need something for your PFC, get this guy. And I'll link the website to it down below so you can get to it, see what it has to offer, see what its feature set and capability is. Because, again, this is me going over this product. I'm not telling you all of the different specs, features, and capabilities of it. I'm just going over the general idea, the general specs of it. So if you want to know more, go ahead and check out that link down below. And if you needed an interface for it, get this guy. At this point, if you're still watching, this thing's pretty long. So thank you. Give it a thumbs up, a like, subscribe. I don't know. If you're still watching it and you don't like it, I don't know why the hell you are. But whatever. So, that's it. Catch you guys later. Peace.